guys, it's Katie with String Expert. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about buying a good quality student instrument. Now, student grade instruments do not have to be expensive. However, you kind of need to know what you're doing when you purchase one because otherwise you're going to wind up ending up with what we like to call a violin shaped object. So a violin shaped object are these terrible instruments that look like a violin Feel like a violin but when you try and play it even me as a professional I would have a very difficult time playing that type of instrument and getting good sound. So there are over 92 different working parts to the violin and each one is very very important and when a luthier a violin maker creates the violin they custom cut all of these parts in order to create a good sound. So if we look at the top of our instrument, one of the things that's really important is to get a violin where the pegs perfectly fit inside the peg box right here. This has to be done by a luthier who personally shaves the pegs and gets them to fit in here. There's also the option of a mechanical peg, which is what I have here. And so a mechanical peg looks just like a regular peg but it has a mechanical mechanism inside that turns similar to like what you would see on a guitar and it allows your violin to stay in tune for an extensive period of time. But even if you don't have the mechanical pegs and you have the regular pegs, if you buy a cheaper instrument, what happens is the pegs are not properly fit in here, so your violin is not gonna stay in tune. I've also seen instances where the peg box was built so poorly that after a few months of a student playing on a violin shaped object, her entire peg box completely fell apart. It was really sad. The next thing to consider is the nut and the fingerboard here. So the nut here holds on your strings and if it's not cut properly, your strings are not gonna lay properly and they're not gonna vibrate correctly. So you're not gonna have a good quality sound. Your fingerboard here needs to be perfectly flat and smooth. If it has any weird arch, you can create a lot of problems in your hands and your fingers and your wrist and permanent damage because the fingerboard is not smooth. And moving on to the bridge here, this is where most violin shaped objects are created and they're very, very cheap. And so what they do is they don't actually cut the board at all. The, um, I'm sorry, they don't cut the bridge at all. And so you have this like very weird square looking bridge. And oftentimes you have to actually pull the bridge out of the violin case and put it on before you can play it. And inside the violin here, we have what we call a sound post. So what happens is the bow goes across the string, it vibrates up, it vibrates down onto this bridge here and the sound travels inside the F hole here where there is a sound post that holds up the side of the violin and it vibrates all through the back of the violin and out through these two F holes. Well, in a traditional violin, a good quality violin, even a student violin, the sound post is not glued in so that it vibrates correctly and creates a great sound. However, with cheap violin shaped objects, it is glued in because the problem is, is that they don't want to have to put in the uh, bridge and so the bridge isn't held up, so they have to glue in the, um, the sound post and it just doesn't allow for it to create a good sound. Additionally, they typically have a very cheap chin rest right here. And this is really important because if you think about the amount of time that you're gonna be practicing and playing, if your chin is resting on an uncomfortable piece of plastic, you're not going to get the best results. You're gonna get tired more quickly and you're gonna stop more quickly. And then what the number one reason that most students quit when they start with a violin shaped object is they're not getting the sound that they want and they feel like it's their fault. But unfortunately with a violin shaped object, it's not their fault. It's just a really poor violin that cannot make a good sound. And it doesn't matter who you are, it's just never going to work. The other thing to consider is the bow. Now most people think about the violin and how important it is, but the bow is actually really important too. So the bow, um, good quality student grade instruments will come with a carbon fiber bow. And that's really important because it's not going to warp. With a 
wood bow, what happens is the wood kind of, you know, warps. It gets moved with temperature and humidity. And so a lot of times your cheaper violin shop, a shaped object will have these bent bows instead of a nice long straight bow. So that's also really, really important. And then if you also consider a lot of them come with a violin case, um, and a poor quality violin case will not protect your instrument, can cause more damage than good to your instrument. So that's also not very good. And then on top of that, some of them even give away a free shoulder rest, but the shoulder rest is so poorly built and so poorly formed that it's basically impossible for anyone to put them on and play. Now, you might think, oh, well, I would love to get a good quality instrument, but it's so expensive. I couldn't possibly afford it, but that's just not the case. A lot of good quality student instruments start in the $100 range, so 100 to 150. So you're gonna save, you're gonna have to spend a little bit more than the $65 range, but you're gonna get a good quality instrument. You're gonna save a lot of heartache in terms of things not working well. And what's great about a good quality student grade instrument is you can actually resell it for 50% of the value. So you're really only spending about $65 if you think about it in the long term instead of $65 for a very cheap instrument that you're going to have to throw away. Now, the next question that I always get is, but I don't know how to find a good instrument and how do you tell the difference? And let me tell you, it is really hard. So here's what I would recommend that you do. Don't go to a local music store because local music stores I'd say about 50% have good quality student violins and 50% don't. Find a luthier. A luthier is a violin maker and they only sell quality instruments and they will have a great student grade instrument. The other option is I also listed a couple of online stores which you can easily shop at, purchase the violin online and have it shipped to you. And they only sell good quality instruments, not these ridiculous violin shaped objects. I wouldn't recommend, unless you know what you're doing, buying a violin off of Amazon or eBay. That's what a lot of people do. They think, oh, we'll just get started. I'll buy a violin on Amazon, it'll be good. No, it's a really bad idea. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that at all. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.